Hi everyone, and welcome to another Woodworking Wisdom. So it's 3 p.m. mid afternoon, it's a hot and muggy day in Axminster, so hopefully we'll get through, okay? Bit warm, but we'll see how we're going. It'd be lovely to know where you're watching us from. What sort of time is maybe what temperature is? I'd love to know, okay? I'm quite intrigued on where people are joining us from. What sort of time it is? Somebody stay up late to watch this or get out of bed really early. So, okay, what are we going to do today? Going to look at making salt and pepper mill. Okay, uh, I make quite a lot of salt and pepper mills. One of my trips, oh, 20 years ago, I went to a place called Barren Bay and I have this beautiful picture of a lighthouse. And uh, did a couple of weeks in Barren Bay, worked with a wood finishing oil at that point out there. Some weird reason on my Google see a screen saver that week, up popped this lighthouse. And it brought back good memories of, and I can remember doing sketches and stuff of ideas for things I want to make. I've still got this book I carried around me, all these sketches in, haven't looked at it for a while. There's this lighthouse idea as a paper mill. So this was the idea I kind of had. All right, so I don't know, Ben, let's just have a look, maybe probably two, I think. Let's have a look. So Ben's doing the cameras for you. All right. So you can see our long shape, turn it on its side for a little bit. So we've got the main body, the top bit, looks a bit like a lighthouse, all right? So quite a nice shape, all right? We'll try and get better pictures as we go through. So we've got our lighthouse. So just going to put that out of the way. We're going to use what I would class as quite standard mill kit, all right? Quite easy to get hold of. So these have stainless steel bar, has a plastic insert cap, which is the feeder that allows, in this case, the salt to drop through. Spring loaded down on here, there's a ceramic grinder and mechanism part on the bottom. Okay, plastic cover to go underneath, wash a bit in the top if you like, with two holes in and square cut out that goes on the top that allows you to turn it and operate it. It's a quite basic kit, nothing too expensive there, which is great. So let's move that out of the way. Going to use longish one again because obviously we need that effect. Carefully pick up that little bag so I don't drop all the screws over the floor. All right, so we can lose on a table quite easily. That's good. Got the load spindle locked at the moment, which is quite nice. So we'll take the chuck off. Material-wise, already done, obviously, a little bit of work. We've got our blank. This starts off as 3-inch square, 75 mil. All right. Um, doesn't have to be dead square. It doesn't have to be spot on those sizes. I've cut certain bits of the length. It's easy to do off of the lathe. So... Got two sections. The top, which we've just found on the floor. Got it. Look, okay. In reality, it's a 75 mil cube. So 75 mil long, 75 mil square. Grain direction at the moment is running parallel. I've even marked what is the top. Why is that important? So the grain direction continues all the way up for our pepper mill. Uh, long bit. This is 235 mil by 75 mil square. So and it's eight. Just over nine inches, okay? Most of you guys abroad in the States, whatever, you, you, you work in metric, right? So 235 is our length we're going to need for that, all right? I've marked the centers up. Again, just really about saving a bit of time. Dot mark them so it's going to make it quick and easy to put them on the lathe, all right? So I'll blank. This is sycamore. You could go with whatever you like. The one I've shown you is ash. doesn't matter what it is. You can make them as decorative or as fancy as you like. So we're aiming really the fact to go for all the basic bits. Got a little bit that we've done just to speed things up. First thing, lathe wise. Um, got a pin I need to take out the index and go put there. Now, I haven't been in here for a few weeks. Uh, I did a Fred chasing thing, I think. Then Ben came in here and we did a pen thing. So we haven't done a turning one since. So I came in and just kind of... This morning, we're setting things up. And this is a good thing to look at. Now, on the belt on here at the moment, we're actually on the high belt setting. Now, I could turn the pepper mill or salt mill on that setting. But actually, I've got a lot of drilling to do. So I'm going to take that out. I'm going to move the belt over. I'm going to go to the middle belt setting. Why? I want to get more torque out of the motor and get more drive. Just because your machine is electric variable doesn't mean that one belt or one setting will do everything. It really means the fact you need to vary that about. If I go right down to the last setting, the slower setting, I actually get more torque out of the motor. So this will do a 14-inch bowl, quite a large diameter. So let's just check we've got it set. Set the speed up. I've got a dial on here. This means it won't also go up to 3,500. So just doing that belt change and quick check can be a good idea. You've finished your last project. 
just check what you're going to do for your next one. We want drive centre. So we've got a pro drive with lots of little teeth and that spring loaded centre. Ring centre in the tail stock. We have got to take both parts down to a cylinder and then we've got a few things to do with them. The top of the mill, so the grain continues, I've marked, as we said, so we know where it is orientation to go on the top of that mill. Block things off. Going to start with the small one, doesn't matter which one we start with. Oh, tall rest. Let's go middle one for a minute. So robust raspies, we've got a lot more clearance on there. I've got something to run my finger in nicely. Setup wise, go for the basics. If the corner's on diamond section right on the top here, my torus needs to be about six millimeters, quarter of an inch below the corner that's facing me where the torus is. That's just a good guide. Okay, so we're set up. Just going to grab our chisel, and then Ben, you've got a question. How are we? So lots of people reporting in from all over the world. Um, um, it's cold in South Africa, but um, it's wow. really hot. I've and got to come there after Christmas, okay? So that'll be interesting. Uh, I'm going to come and get some pink ivory, but my wife doesn't know yet, but now they're out, okay? Okay, so um, a question from Jim. He says, sorry, it's a little bit off topic, but um, what sort of screws would you use to um, fix a, a blank to a faceplate? <sighs> As long as you're sensible with your screws, and we all M and over and get to this. First of all, it depends on the size. You need to look at the reference of the length. Make sure they're thick enough. So something four and a half mil, definitely or above. Lengthwise is so critical. Um, at home, I tend to use torque type headed screws. I've even got some washer head type screws, like the Craig screws or the pocket hole jig screws. They're really good. But diameter is quite an important part. Don't go too thin, or you're going to snap them off. If you're putting them into something really hard, like a piece of oak, maybe you need to drill a pilot hole. Because I tell you, there's nothing better than screwing the screw up onto the faceplate. It catches on that faceplate, which is hard. The momentum's still trying to pull forward that little bit, and you snap the screw head off. It's great. Then you've got to get it out. So there is that scenario. But really, try and think about your sizes and everything else. All right? That's the most important thing. Um, I've even put longer screws in around the edge of a face plate, maybe short ones near the middle. Depends on the weight of the blank. All those things come into it, all right? But try and think separately. And good quality screws are worth buying. Don't buy cheap screws. You will snap them for a pastime. And then to get them back out of the blank, it's hard work, okay? We'll do that as a problem one in a few weeks. I think that'd be a good one. Ben? Um, I just wanted to make a quick apology about the sound. Um, if, if I turn the volume up anymore, the distortion um, becomes more. So... Um, I've just turned it down. Am I might be being too loud? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I think it's something on the microphone. All right, okay. Do I need to bring my mic a bit nearer me, or is it all right? Okay. Good. okay, good. Right. So, we've got a blank. We're loaded. We've got our safety glasses. Again, take the speed down. Worth doing. So, he's set up on diamond section with that block. Take the speed up. Now running. 1,200. I've got my left foot outside. I've got my feet facing one there. Right hand one's going out. Left hand one's facing forward, so I've got good stability. We start with the handle low, bring it on. We can take the speed up a bit. Let's get this done. Another thing I've done, make sure everything is nice and sharp. Love this aspect of being a run. Your hand along this groove in the tall rest. Um, I did some teaching at the weekend, and one of the problems I have was that very issue of how you run your hand on the tall rest. This acts as a depth stop. So my finger's running in that groove. It gives me something as a depth stop to guide the tool. Move things along. Sounds changing. We're down to a cylinder. First one's done. We need three eight feeding tool. One there. I need a set of calipers. What a rough idea. Going to bring this in. We cut down the leverage a lot. Three eight feeding tool. We need to make. A tenon or a spigot on the end, just as a guide. That'll do. One. Okay, now on the top. So the knob we're going to use on the top to wind it. This is on the top base only. Okay, you'll see the relevance of that in a second. Main body bit. It's so there. I'll find the dent. So I've used a bread or mark to guide that in. Got to there. This is the base of my mill. Turn it up, turn it by hand. 
any movement at this stage, you'll get a bit of rocking. Amazing how much quarter of a turn can do. A very important thing. And again, this is thinking about how you tighten and set your leg up. The side handle that moves your banjo. Make sure you do that one up before you start playing around with trying to wind anything forward. And nice and tight. If you don't, the centre will actually tilt backwards. It will lift up off the leg bed a bit. Not good. So make sure that's tight. Then work on here. Real basic stuff, I know, but I'm amazed when we do teaching sessions or we talk to people and I always get it right. I'm going to I'm going to cheat now. Nice, long, tall rest. Again, same thing. Setting up diamond section. Drop it down so we're about six mil below the corner that's facing me. Get it parallel. Turn it by hand. Check everything's nice and clear. Then. So we've got a question from Steve here. Um, he says he's right-handed and has real trouble with um, tool control when working towards the headstock. Okay. Um, is there any trick to help? So he's right-handed? Right-handed yeah, okay. and trouble when going towards the headstock. Okay. First thing you might have problems with, and this is with him, body stance. And this is one of the things why I maybe hate doing videos because it's so difficult to show you where you stand. My left foot now, I'm right out here. So if I was walking forward, that's my body line. Look where the work is. I've now given myself room to come all the way over. I'm thinking about where I need to be, if you like, for that end cut. This is easy. I could stand over here and do something, but I block it with my body. By moving my body over and setting my feet up, so my right foot is actually facing out here, parallel with the leg, left foot facing forward. I've now got stability that I can move my body weight across, and it's so important. Okay, your body will block what you're working on. So that position of your feet and everything else really important. So handle for this, we're going to bring on the side of the middle, handle down low, gently bring it up. All right, so I've dropped the handle, bring it up take a little bit we can find our bevel rub edge and where it's cutting so our spindle wrestling girls we can work along easy coming there now i shift my weight from my left foot to my right foot if i don't take the tool off the tool rest i haven't got to go back to reset if i lift it off put it back on i drop the handle down bring it up move off knock the corners off a bit going to come towards me now so i position my body so actually I can start there, shift my body weight. Right foot is there, back to my left foot. You see my body move a little bit. I'm not walking, just shifting the weight. We've knocked the corners off a little bit. Let's take the speed up. Spinning it faster will make it easier to work, but you've got that change of it and safety aspect. Now I've taken the corners off a little bit, I can work along, forward and backwards. Left hand has got a guide. Now I can do different aspects. I can put my hand over the top, and pinch it. I've still got the fingers on the tool rest. That acts as a block, deflects the shavings, that limits my visibility. But it does allow me to talk more while we're serving. Okay? So I'll scoot down along. Finger of thumb on here. If there's enough room on the tool rest, fantastic. So I want straight cylinder. Body weight's moving the whole time. Back to left foot. Down to right. Shavings are getting longer. Got a high spot in the middle out there. You can just feel it. So a real basic thing, but even that position of where you stand is going to affect things so much. So with that question kind of happened, I've given myself room to be able to move this along without blocking my body or hitting. All right. Next thing, it's got a guide. This is therapeutic. It's not a white knuckle ride. You shouldn't be gripping and getting lots of white tension on here and juddering along. If you're getting that problem where things aren't gliding, relax. All right. Next thing, make sure the tool rest is nice and clean, not lots of little dents in it. Take a fountain. We did it the other week for the thread chasing one. Exactly the same thing. I want things to move nice and freely. A little bit of candle wax can be good. All right. All those things play a part in this. Right. We've knocked our corners off. We now need to do spigot or turning, either end. So, one on there, free eight beating tool, nice and low. That's the base. This one we can go 
get in there. Now, do you better cut this on chop saw or table saw? I know the ends are relatively square and straight. Haven't taken too much off to create that tenon. I haven't gone in too deep. All right, now we're going to take the tool rest out of the way just for a second because it's going to get in the way for what we want. We need knockout for uh, take that pro drive out. All those little teeth will really provide a lot of grip, do less damage to the material as well. Okay, so they don't go in as far. That's really quite an important part. It's spring loaded in the center. We've adjustable with two grub screws so I can adjust the tension of that spring loaded point. It makes it easy to load it because the spring makes contact in the middle until you push it up. So you can check things as central. Nice to load with. We're going to put the chuck on. Chuck key. Base of. So the base is facing the tailstock. Jewels can wind out gently. Good to there. Got a nice square shoulder line where this fits in the chuck. So nice and square so I can register on the top of the jewels the face surface. All right, tighten things up. I can check things look pretty good on the tailstock. Take the speed down. All right, this is held just on one end. Let's do a quick look. That's not bad. Okay. What we've got to do now. I'm going to do two things now. Let's just lift it off for a second. Take the tailstock off because I want just a tiny bit of access onto here. Not critical this, but it'd be nice to do. We want to level the underside. This is the bottom of your mill. We can take the speed up a little bit. I've got three each bowl gouge. I'm going to grip down the toy rest, rest the babble. Coming along inside that, I'm a good half inch in from the edge that I want to start at. I can use my thumb as a pivot point, use the tip. There it is, come back off the edge. I want to level this up. Okay, so my thumb's working a lot on the tool rest. So that's the bevel, find it, slide back, take a little bit off. Don't need to go all the way to the middle. What I'm trying to do is level this outside edge. Done. Right, okay. Just setting up, we're going to see this a little bit. We're going to do the short block as well. Just put the tail stock back on. Just putting the water plate in. I need to take the center out. So I can wind it back on here or use the knockout bar. Ring center comes out. Drill chuck is there. Now we're going to use a number of drill bits. And I'm sorry that there are a number of drill bits. No matter what pepper mill, salt mill you go with, there is always a number. This is a 38 mil. Okay, this is short pattern, just about enough on here. Need to make sure next thing that causes issues, the drill chuck will wobble if the barrel isn't far enough forward because most of the drill chucks on the market are designed for engineering machines and have a tang on that bottom edge, that square black bit. So I need to make sure it come far enough forward with that tailstock barrel. At the moment, it will wobble not located so let's bring it up get it to grip better there next thing we want to do take the speed down okay other thing i've done this morning i spent probably 25 minutes with a diamond file and i sharpened all the drills i'm going to use why i want them to cut we're going into end crane it's hard work and grain, and grain is quite resistant, so you've got to have things sharp. Diamond fell is worth that effort of touch the edge back up. Now, just going to wind this forward, take the speed down so I'm more in control. I'm leveling off the little middle bit I've left. Just going to switch it off, okay? On my tailstock, I have a mark of where the self-ejection point is now for the drill chuck. I set it up earlier. So what did I do with a mark? Mark a pen. To a line level with the end of where the barrel is, the silver polish bit, okay, onto there, off the paintwork. My recess for this drill needs to be, and I've just taken it up to its level, so we're level with the bottom mill, the start point of the drill. I need nine millimeters deep, three eighths of an inch, so I can set it up on a vernier. I've now got a way of actually, let's go. I've got my line on here.
up to my point. So I can measure it to get an accurate depth. All right. So first of all, pen line off the re painted barrel surround gives me nine mil deep. First one done. That was easy. Definitely worth that effort to sharpen that drill. All right. We're now going to change it. We need 32 millimeters. So change the drill. Just get the bow a bit. Right. Okay. Going to bring back to my start line again. Ejection point. I can come back level with the paintwork. I've got to do this for the top as well. So we'll see it there. This one is a lot less. All right. This is the recess for where the ceramic parts go in. I need five millimeters. So set it up. I've just made contact with the bottom. I can feel it now. That's great. Slow speed again, puts me in control, it allows it to cut. We're up to our deck. Five mil. So that simple technique of adding a pen mark and then measuring off it takes a lot of guesswork out of how deep you are. Bring it back, I need to take the drill check out. I don't have to. I've still got a drill to do all the way up through the middle. I will say I would have done this with all of them, but one of the things we sell over here is made by a company called Fish. It's a Morse taper fitting drill with a knockout bar system. So I can change the drill bit and then put it on Morse taper. That's the ejection bar. Acts as a wedge that fits into a hole. I can add extenders to make it longer. So I can change the length. So on this, the beauty of this, first of all, it's shorter in length than the drill chat. So actually I can get it all on the live. This is 27 millimetres. We can start to drill. You've got a lot to go through on this. Speed-wise, I'm under 400 RPM. People are often puzzled on why we drill at slow speed. It saves you burning the drill out. It's more effective to help you clear. You've got to go in short stages. I'm limited on this lay by how long the barrel is. Okay. Now, I'm not going to go all the way through on this because it's going to take a bit of time and it's not very exciting to watch. All right, so just need to take this out so we can understand what we're going to do. Let's have a look on the overhead. That's your hole there, a recess. So, okay. So on here, we've got our recess mark. We've got a step, another step, and then the 27. So we have 38, which is the overall diameter of the mechanism. The recess is five mil deep. That's where the ceramic parts fit into. And then the hole down the middle is 27. So at that point, I can swap it around, put it in the other way, which is why we put that tenon on either end. We can start the lathe at slow speed still. I can check the fins run through. A little bit of wobble. So let's just undo it, move it round, have a quick look. That's better. It's a long length to try and set up in a chuck. One-handed to try and tighten the key. Things will drop down a bit. Timber will compress at certain points. So let's bring this up. We can do the same as we've just done. We drill this end. Right? So you go about halfway in a drill. Those two will meet up. Easy way of doing it. Now, I love this aspect of this drill bit in here. So I said we've got some prep, and the drilling can take a bit of time. Major thing, remember to keep drawing it back to remove that waste. Or it bungs up behind the drill shank. It's going to stop the lathe. It's going to cause problems. So, with your top, we can put it in. That's why we had the tenon one end. Change our drill. We're going to go back to the 38. Load it. Can bring that up. The first thing I just want to do, to fact, this will be a bandsaw cut and it will affect the drill, how it's going to work. Going to level the end. Go back to that gouge again. So, go ahead and get my hand around the tool rest. I've left that long rest in, it'll work. We've got the drill chuck. Let's just drop that out. It's right on that point, just so it's out the way, really. Hand around the tool rest, thumb on the top. I can rest the bevel. Not cutting, swing the hand well, find where it cuts. The flute, we're cutting with the very center tip of the gouge. Bring it back, push across. So this is testing the water if you like, find the angle before I drop it on. That's good. 
all I wanted to do there is just skim up the fibers, make sure it's flat down there. Okay. Drill chuck, we can bring back into play. Check it's loaded. Bring it up. Take the speed down. Now, I've made the dent in the middle. I've just wound it back to my pen line again. This one's not so critical. I got a lump. But we're going to go about yeah, six mil. A little bit fast. Bring the speed down. 400 or under will be good. If the drill chuck slips or anything, 400, you can grab it. If you're doing a 1,000 or more, it's going to burn when you catch it in your hands. Let's have a quick look. Oh, a tiny bit. There we go. So we've done 32. New drill, where have I put the thing there? There's one, five. Then we should have an 18. Okay. I know where it is. It is here. It's right. Ben's looking all panicky. The, the 18 is sat in something else that we need in a minute. Okay. How oh, bad? Let me just do, okay. This one, this is an 18 mil drill. All right. The 18 mil drill is the same diameter. Ben, just overhead for me, please. As that little washer plate. All right. So that's 18 mil diameter. The idea of this hole is literally to sink that in. So let's bring it up so I get the tip in. I can come back to my pen line, take it up to a level. That's enough. So I can use the thickness as a guide to where I want to be. So I can even use the washer and hold it on that pen line and see where I'm drilling to. We're then changing to a six mil drill. Quarter inch probably for the guys out the US. Six mil, you must get metric drills out there. I know you do. I've met a few of you. We drill as deep as you can go with this for a second. Uh, then we uh, bringing it back on the barrel. Again, just going to clean it. Drill a bit more. Again, slow speed. Now I've drilled most of my hole, I can actually push it back and forwards nice and easy. Great. Put the washer nicely out of the way. Take the drill chuck out. We don't want that. Okay, Ben, you had a question. What have you got, mate? So um, it's a question from Fuller. He's bought a, a tool rest in the States, um, and it's the um, the stem on it is very ever so slightly small, so it's slipping in the um, so it slips. In the banjo. Yeah, or in the or in okay. The... Could be worth checking you put the right size. Some of them will be 25 millimeters, some of them will be inch. Even over here, we get inch stem on here. Some of the loads we've got in the room here are 25 mil. Other thing you can do, this will make sure it's clean, get rid of any grease on the tool rest, the stem, even the banjo. Maybe rough the end of the lock bolt up. So I've just taken that locking handle out, clean the end of that, rough it up a little bit. That's what's doing the grip. It's quite an important part. Next thing, check how your handle is working. Is it working freely? So when you do the knob up here, you get a collection of wood dust in there. It starts to bang it up. It makes it very tight. You're not actually locking on the tool rest as firmly. So you might need to take this bolt out, clean that up. So those things will make a difference, all right? And would it be possible to shim it? Be worth shimming it? If you're trying to shim it, you've got too much room. It's the wrong size. Just as simple as that. If to me, if you've got that amount of play that you could make a shim that you're trying to fit down the side, it sounds a bit too small. All right. Okay. So, tour rest behind us. Want that? Okay. We need. I can say, where's, where's the chuck? But it's on the live. Okay. I knew that. I did. All right. So, we're going to do a bit of shaping on this top section. So 3.8 feeding tool, I want to reduce this diameter. So I'll do this all in one heavy cut. So I'm going to bring it down, half width, just checking my arm, that's close. Put the calipers down, don't need those now. I'll take the speed up, going for 3.8 wide. All right. Next two can bring some of this down, 
I chopped just short because I want to create a lump stop point. And, um, we can come into the take bit of material. So I want my whip to be free out for the stub on the end that I've just cut. Again, not dead critical. All right, just need a set of calipers. I'm going to measure. I'm trying to remember what we've got on here. This is a mill, a lamp. So I've got 35 millimeters from the step we've just left to the line I've just scribed right up here. So again, we can remove that. We like beading tool, light cut. So I'm trying to do one heavy cut. Again, handle starts low. You can see some on the top pushing down, fingers gripping underneath. I gradually arc it, so I bring the handle up gently. There it is, up to there. Want this bit straight. A bit to get. Blending it in. That looks good. One step now, halfway between. That's six mil wide, midway between the two diameters. So this is a little bit larger. This is turned down about the size of my chuck jaw. So it's about 56 millimeters, two and a quarter inches. This size is similar with the quarter inch wide step. Then this is a larger diameter. So probably about 72 mil. All right, so just feeling with fingertips what's going on. Let's have a quick look. Uh, that's quite clean. That's nice. All right, good. So we've leveled the bottom here. We need to do a little bit of a chamfer. What to use? Uh, I wonder if I can find. I'm going to play with. I might regret this. Go with my skew. Look, tip of it. Just slide down. I want to create a little bit of chamfer on that edge. That's good feel. I've got to get rid of the little bit I've just left in there. Nice. Okay. I'm going to soften the bottom. And again, fingertips quite important for this. At this stage, I don't know if we're going to do too much of this. We've got more things to do that are important than lots of sanding. I've cut it quite cleanly. We're now going to do, in reality, the holes, the decoration. Okay. So you can see what we've done there. That's that. That was a good guess, wasn't it? That beautiful. All right. I should I should do this professionally, you know, Ben. I mean, that's almost close, isn't it? Right. So let's have a little bit of a pencil line as a guide on where we want. I'm going to say there. Don't need the pencil line all the way around, but I'm going to draw it on. We need something to drill the hole with. So first of all, we need to find that 18 mil drill. That's that one. All right, sorry, Ben. All right, so 18 mil drill. Then I've made up a drilling guide. So I turned a piece of wood that fits into the banjo, one inch. I've then drilled some holes for it, and I've used it for numerous different operations now. Also, I need to make sure the hole that I drill in here is the same as the shank for the drill I want to use it with. I'm using a Forstner. It goes in there. So this can go back and forward and be guided. Is that beautiful? Simple. Now, I know if Ben sits here and he's nodding and he's agreeing, I must be explaining it right. I like this, okay? Now, this is going to go into the banjo. Next thing I'm going to do is bring the whole setup in towards the tailstock centre I've still got, because I need to adjust my height. All right, so I need to come down a little bit for this lathe. Um, slightly different probably than my lathe I've got at home height-wise. Playing around, we're just checking the centre tip height. That's not bad, okay? So you understand what we've done? So we've leveled the tip of the drill to the tailstock center point. All right. It's a bit of a weird way of trying to show you on the camera on there. I can bring this in. I can bring the drill back to me. I've locked it up on the lower banjo handle, making sure I've got a gap between the tip of the forstner. Bring it back. Oh, I've got loads. That's good. And line up with my pencil line. So I'm looking down from above. Just trying to check there what's going on. I'm trying to check things look parallel. Tighten things up. All right. So we all can understand that bit. So this is going to allow us to accurately 
drill it. I've got to come back far enough to be able to turn it round to make sure we get clearance. So don't make, you know, make sure that little centre stub isn't touching the workpiece as you turn it over. You get a nice scratch line all the way round. Quite easy to make up a drilling guide. Next thing we need to index it. Okay. Now the lathe in here has got quite a nice little index device, so I can open the door. Everything is numbered. Now you won't see it clearly, but actually before I came into here and we did do a photo. I've taken a whiteboard pen and marked the locations I want. I want six holes in this. So I started at number one, I put a mark, then I counted four, then the next one. So Ben, I think you've got a picture that we did for that. Just did a quick image. You can see when I put the marker pen there, it makes it quick and simple for me to redrill those holes, set it up, and know I'm in the right place. So I line up with the cast iron plate, which you can see on the top of the lathe, really there, where it's open on the right-hand side of that picture. I can sight in line with that and see where my number is and line the blue pen mark up with that. When I'm finished with being a whiteboard pen, just wipes off. It's fantastic. Makes it easy. Okay. But it also means you don't make mistakes. But you get so caught up in this bit. Next sensible thing to do, and I'm just going to reach down and do it. I've just turned the lathe off on the mains. Because for some silly reason, when you put your cordless drill in, your brain says go, you press the button on the lathe and you try and start it. So it's good to do that. So I've got the indexing on here on the back edge of the live. So Ben, I think you can just say, let me just, so I've got my number down on here. You can see there's a blue mark right there. I can put the indexing comes into the back here. Check it there. I'm over one. So that's come back one. That's in line. Beautiful. Great. Do one here then. So high speed. In, takes a little bit of effort, pushing in, bring it back, one, turn it over, set the next one, now I've said that, so I'm hoping we're far enough, difficult to know until I've gone about halfway, we might have to go back round, but we'll see in a second. Got idea. Let's take that round as well. Let's put it on drill. Next blue line comes round. Get it all the way. I think I've got probably to make them a little bit deeper in a sec. We can really go in. Okay, up to there. Yeah, I need a little bit more duct, so we'll set that up. So I'll take a bit more out of the drill chuck. That's better. Now I'll quickly go back round. Now again, by putting that blue marker pen, makes it so much easier to refine all that. So I'm just working around nice and quick. Why not set the drill chuck up to still? Wasn't quite sure how far I needed to be in, but you can see me drilling in nicely. Ooh, wonder if I can get a tiny bit more. Might have a tiny bit in the middle, we'll see. Didn't want to do too much with the banjo, but I can come in a tiny bit now. Too much. We're blocking your view a bit now. Check I can turn it over without putting a mark. Oh, just that little bit. That's better. No one said this was easy, you know, doing things like this, did they? 
Uh, that's got rid of the bit I was after. So what we're trying to do is get the holes to meet up all the way around. Okay, that's good. Let's take the drill off. Take our drill guide out. Okay, so length stop. We can work on how far we come up to the drill bit onto there. Okay, quite an important part. Try and get enough. I could have possibly measured a little bit from the center would have been a good idea before we started. But working around like that quite good because it allows you to gradually deepen. We've got our holes. Ben, what have you got? Um, so a question here from Cliff. He's asking why the lathe is uh, moving or flexing. Because we've got we're not bolted down. Um, I put quite a bit of pressure on the drill. I'm getting impatient. I know I've got about an hour. So I'm trying to kind of, right, so it will move a bit, okay? Don't have things bolted down in here. I level the feet. So it will rock about a little bit, okay? And that's a slightly smaller lathe than we usually use. That's um, this has got press, uh, a box section still stand, so again, rubber feet. So actually, it's anti-vibration feet, but not quite as heavy. Um, when Cohen went away, me and Bad decided we'd have a little lathe in instead of the big one, but just just hasn't gone back. We haven't moved it. Right? Actually, as a lathe, I like this. I use one of these as a demo lathe, so quite a nice one to go and play with. All right? Uh, another one. Uh, come on. Let's... So uh, Sorry, Robert's got a question here. Um, he doesn't have indexing on his lathe. Is there okay. another way he could do it? I was thinking about this earlier. If you you could make up an index plate that in reality also worked off of this thing, all right? Because if you made it slightly wider and you had another line that came over with a hole in further out this side, all right, where the pencil point is, with somewhere having an index pin that went through, a nail. You could have a screw, okay? If you took a circle on the end and you get a set of dividers and you go from the middle to there to the outside you can mark them down like you would a hexagon you could transfer the lines down so you get six points and then you'd be able to dot mark them you can use this thing with your extra pin to come out the side you're going into scrap material on this end and then drill your house so there are ways of doing it with using right you'd have to mark them out um, funny enough, me and Ben discussed this before we came on here. The other option, Ben, how, how many lathes do you reckon you can sell this afternoon? Do, do you want to sell a few? Ben can do your orders while we try to do the cameras. Okay, so at this stage, we might want to tidy this up. Let's see if we can get in there. So all I've got on here, piece of round down, some double-sided tape, make up a quick sanding stick. So I can get in there, hand sand that, Okay. We can move around. I might not do all of them, okay? But you can see the aspect of quite easy to hand sand in there. Just to clean those fibers up. Get my braid up in the heart, that's better. Can even go there. Right, okay, one side is, uh, this is finer. I can go all the way through now. That one there. Link to the other hole if I'm lucky. Now, this has got six. Uh, I've tried doing this with five. It looked okay, but a lot of material in between. I did four. Nah, didn't look really good. I also tried a 20 mil drill and not an 18, but that means you buy another drill. It also meant the bits in between the holes were incredibly thin and weak. So an 18 is a nice size to go with for this, and it also matches that insert plate that we have in here, okay? So it means you buy one less drill. Sanded, they're not too bad. We spend a bit of time, okay? At the moment we have, let's have a quick take out. I've got movement on there. We're sanding this, all right? So at that stage before we take it out, I'd sand the bottom, the edge, up through to your windows. Sanding's going to take a bit of time this afternoon. All right, looks quite nice. Not that much to sand on it. I've got a fluffy edge just on there. The turning's nice and clean. The steps are nice and clean. Bring it back in. There you go. All right. What we're going to do now, I want to do the top. So I've done this so this will deliberately fit in under the jaws I've got in the chat. So those guys that might have 
a dovetail shape on the inside of your jaws. This has got a straight and a lip. If you have a dovetail shape, maybe cut a little bit of angle on that, that platform so it matches that dovetail shape so you can load it straight into your jaws. Not too much pressure. I've also made sure that I've worked down to the, about the right diameter for the chuck jaws, 56 mil. All right, that's why I set them up with that caliper, so I'm gripping all the way around. I'm not going to put lots of dents in and mark it. Live's not going to work. Put the power back on. Okay, good. Um, now we can start to do our top shaking. Finger and thumb around the toe, rest again. So hand goes in underneath. You can use that tip. We could bring the towel stock up. We're going to need the towel stock in a minute. Nice light cut. We are working larger to smaller. This is spindle work. I've changed the bevel angle. I've lifted the gouge off. and go back to resting that bevel. Not cutting. Gently bring my hand out. So pushing the tip down. Find the cut. Slide it back. Push forward. My left thumb's the drive. My right hand is keeping everything level and following at the same pace. I want a chamfer. If we push the right hand out quicker, we will get a curve. If we pull the right hand in towards my body, which is difficult for this cut, we'd end up with a hollow. So, all possible. This stage, pushing larger to smaller, take a little bit off. All the way in. Okay. We need to find the middle, put a little part and guide hole, a bit like a, a engineer would drill. So an engineer would do a centre drill mark. I'm using my skew just to give me that guide. That six mil drill we had, got to come up, not that much. Wind up the tailstock so that matches, bring that down. Gently got to come up to there wind it forward. Now this should meet the hole that we've already drilled from the other side. We've also, which you know now, probably got that window space. Uh, let's bring that back, undo the handle a bit more. Tight. I think we're through. We'll find out in a sec. Yep, you can see the drill. Turn it off. Then holding the drill chuck. Bring it back out. Next thing I want to check while we're at this stage, before you'd sand this, a little bit too much. So we need to flatten off the top. So why a little bit too much? I'm trying to match the diameter on the top where the center point comes through to the diameter of the steel up and up on the top. All right. So that diameter, if not, you've got a step, it's going to look a bit unusual. So skew chisel I can use flat like a scraper, take a little bit off. Let's have a quick look. That's not bad, that's quite nice. At this point, we'd sand it. All right, now we'll hold this up, you get an idea of where we are. Let's go over all those little bits we've just done. I'll get my pencil. So we'll start on the underside. We've got the insert plate for where the washer plate's going for the winder mechanism. A reset is going to be used in a minute. Your window holes. Draw those. You can hand sand all the way through. Your metal bar will show up through the middle. The top, we've just done. We're trying to make sure that when the knob goes on, that all ties together and looks nice. Let's bring that back in. All right. So I've tried to match that diameter. Well, I did first of all, and I cut it come a bit too far up. Not enough of a flat, nothing for it to seat on. It'll look a bit ugly. At this point, we can sand all of it. You can hold it in the chart. You can move things about. Okay, quite easy to do. Right. Good. I've got the base to do now. All right. Now, the base is easy. We've just done all the hard work. Some of you will have watched a while back, and I had this thing. I have... A bottle stopper rubber, which we make, do bottle stoppers on. I have adapted things that I use for production run turning to make things quicker. So my cone drive, the bottle stopper rubber has a thread inside. I think it's M8, so I can put a bolt. I have a piece of timber that I've turned down that will screw on. 
if you didn't see where we did this, this was in the work holding video that we did, right? So if you go onto the Woodworking Wisdom site, you can find that work holding video. Goes through loads of stuff, all right? Um, I got some great comments on it, so it's always worth another watch. So we've got the comb drive. We have our mill. We've got the recess in the bottom. This is one I've already done, so the hole goes all the way through, all right? Recess, recess for the mechanism, base. That's going on the comb. We need something to go on the tailstock. Whatever we put in the tailstock has got to be bigger than 27 mil. So my ring drive will fit in there nicely. Good. Two rests. Might as well go back to the long one. Vernier. Now, I know what size this is, don't I? This is 38. So we want a spigot down here or a tenon to match the size that we did that recess. Now, this is the 38. I'm just turning around to check. This is a few drill bits on the bench there. Uh, wind this in. Just bring the calipers in. Checking where it fits. Just there. Bring it back. Just goes over. That's nice. So we're mounted on that drive. That's going to give us some drip. Tail stuck in. I'm going to do parting cut with ring calipers. Down to there. Check this is square as a shoulder. At this stage, and it's not critical to do it at this stage, but it gives you the relevance of what we're doing. I'll take it off. Those two will come together. Okay. We're making boxes now. Okay. That fits beautifully. All right. Too tight. Just that little bit, but it shows you how easy we can use the drill bit just as a quick setup. I want a little bit off. That'll do for a second. We're going back to that large spindle wrapping gouge. I can see my steps. I've got gouge on the side. I'm using my left hand to slide on the rest. Again, body weight, so important. So my right foot and left foot, same setup as we said before, allows me to swing my body weight. Push things out. Oh, uh, creating nice long curve. Coming down towards the top. Check where things are. In a second, we're going to move and have a look. Want a bit more, I reckon. Just off of there. A brand. Move my left foot now. I'm going to come the other way. Almost from the centre towards the base. Got the wrapping gouge right on its side again. So I'm using the side wings. It's a bit we tend to not use, but it's a bit flatter up there. As in shape. So it helps me produce a nice, long, flat cut. The middle, with it having more curve, is better definitely for wrapping down. Once you're down to a cylinder... You can change where you cut with it. That's quite good. A little bit on the end and just chasing. And come back to there. Next thing that's really important, how quick we expect to do this. I've just done nice slow cut working up through. Want to check a few things now, just looking at my shape, how it feels. Just going to take this off. Going to bring the two together, see how it looks. Ben, what have you got as a question? So the uh, the Morse taper bit that holds the drill, um, the Forsner bit, Yep. is that a fish product? I'm That's just... a fish product, but they do it as part of, I think, there's a box set. Um, we do it as a box set. There's two box sets in there that have fish products. So if you go to the wave cut drills, I think it's listed as, there are in amongst there, okay? I'm um, going to try and look out, going to push upstairs a little bit and kind of say, could we have certain sizes that would fit in there to do, say, salt and pepper mills would be great. All right. I like the idea of using that. It's a way of setting up, just tightening my bolt on my bit of pine. Look, bring that in. And I brought the shape together, got a little lump I can feel here. Okay, nothing too bad. 
back to the gouge. It's on the lathe there. Okay, it's why we can't find it. Nice and light now. So I've taken the handle down. Not a lot of pressure behind it. Slower movement. I, know, I thought I was going to get questions about skew tools then, but not, not. Okay, so nice and light. Slow movement, nicely relaxed. I can move the left and gear along the tour rest. Create quite a clean cut. Much finer shaving than we did earlier. Just build my shape. You can see what we're getting. Compared to things earlier. Oh, wow. Well, let's have a look. That chalk and cheese, isn't it? All right. Very different shavings. Shape wise. Okay. It's not too bad. Got a nice curve. So I'm going to bring that back. Again, this stage, I could sand it. That's quite easy to sand. Now, the nice thing we're using the cone drive set up with a bit of wood, I can get my fingers in here and sand that edge, come up through, get that all sanded. We said about sanding the top. If I put this in a set of chuck jaws or anything, right, you've got the mass of metal here, it blocks it. So that bottle stopper arbor with different things attached to it, fantastic. Love using it. Makes it my life a lot easier. So I can move that out. We're going to move that bottle stopper over. Take that off before I knock it off. Okay. Move to rest, put it back out the way. Oh, mechanism now. The white bit on here, and this is the mechanisms we obviously do here. We have a spring, a plastic cone. This is 27 mil, so I'm out of picture. 27 mil, it's a problem with focusing on it. The ceramic bits down the bottom, that's all together. I've got a plate that locks in. I need to pull the bar through. That's good. This will all assemble. Now, we're going to push this in. I've sanded everything. That will sit right down inside there level. I can pull that down. This point, I'm really just checking. Have I got the right length? Goes up through. Bear with me. So, at this point, you would have your metal disc you might fit in there. But what I want to check is how is my length working with where the lock screw is on the top. Got to have enough thread. Mine looks good. You could cut a little bit off. Or if it's too long, you can shorten or lengthen that spigot back along. So it'll go on. All right. I can tighten that up. All right. At the moment, we haven't got everything in place. Plastic insert disc goes on the bottom. It has some writing which should show. That goes in there. There is fixing holes in there and down the side of. All right. So they are there. Obviously, you can do color. Um, so Ben, let's have a quick look on. Just on there. I think that probably works right actually on the overhead, mate. That's good, right? So you can see how I've colored it, given it a bit of green. You could do that once you've got all the way through that sanding. Color it up. I think it looked grand as a... I have to have any of them, yeah. So... Ben, going to ask you, have you got any questions? Have you got, obviously, are you still hunting for your your drills? Yeah, I was still, I'm trying to find that Morse taper sleeve. Okay. Um, um, you, the sleeve would be part of the drill set, so it's not a separate, okay? okay? There are also extension bars. Best thing we can do. Um, who, who, oh. I can put it in the comments after the video. If I okay. Find so what it. I'm getting at, if you wanted, you could email me with right, that, and we'll put it as a thing. I will find it. I know it is there, okay? Um, that is a fish product. Be nice to try and do it. I like it as a product. So it'd be something we've never tried pushing properly. Um, why do I like it? You haven't got that big drill chuck in the way, which actually limits how much movement you get. On the lathe in here, I was really panicky about the fact I was going to get stuck on the length of the pepper mill and not have enough room for the drill chuck with the drill bit in. That's something, okay? Um, as a salt and pepper mill girl, great little idea. I love, love the shape. Um, if you live where somewhere where a nautical feel and you're into boaties, anyone's going to love them, aren't they? Okay. Um, I've had a few people pick up the one that I've had on my dash yesterday when I bought this in and kind of said, this is what we're doing tomorrow. Oh, wow. All right. So quite a nice, simple project. The indexing, yeah, okay. If you haven't got indexing, there are ways of making that with six holes. Think about how you'd mark out a hexagon at school. So simple to do. You can make up a simple index plate just for this project. All right, which will give you six spacings. Um, real basic turning. Lots of drill bits, I'm sorry. Okay, lots of drill bits means it's a bit of money to invest in, but 
they do work. They get the job done, it's quicker. With the drilling, take the lathe speed down. This is going over all those little danger things that I know I've seen over the years. Too fast to speed means the drill can be too aggressive. It's not going to help you, all right? Send it, get them finished. Overall finish on them, I use an oil finish, all right? A food safe oil, really just the outside. These are get picked up with grubby hands, all right? Any other questions, Ben? You got anything else? Guys, hopefully you've enjoyed it. Um, kind of, I know when I got halfway through, looking at the clock in here, making words, you know, we could have probably sanded it, but you all know about sanding. That's easy, isn't it? So just that bit, all right? So we're going to see you next week. Have a good weekend.